A good raw editor is Handy Photo. We'll open up a raw image with Handy Photo. Here we go. Has a lot of options. Has a lot of filters. And all of these filters you can adjust. And it has a lot of different masks. You can I mean, a couple of different ways you can do masks. And the masks have a lot of adjustments as well. Edge wear on or off. Invert the mask. paint the mask on it. I think Candy Photo is a very strangely powerful photo editor in general. And it's just nice that it can also do raw photos. I'm going to change the mask to the whole picture. You can also do frames. There's a lot of different options as well. You can do textures. Which is a nice feature. You can also mask off parts of the image to add those two. Let me see, I'll show. Not going to save. Sometimes it takes it a, a moment to open the files. So let's say we wanted to, I'll show you with these uh, textures. It's something I like to do sometimes. So we want to add this water. Okay? And we'll go to um, masking options. Right, yeah. Say uh, edge aware. No. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's do this guy then. All right. And you wear on. So it'll be able to tell that where those mountains in the sky meet, that there's an edge, and it will kind of stop the effect right there. Almost like the... Almost like it's just coming down and coming down behind the mountains. <clears throat> I 
I've done a picture like this before, where it looks like bubbles are coming up behind the mountains on the horizon. Instead of like smoke from a volcano. So this is a very, very powerful photo editor. This also has uh, the ability to save very high resolution. See, 54 me megapixel resolution. Very high. Let's, uh, should I save that photo? No, I'm not going to save it. So this is a very good photo editor for Android. A really good, probably my favorite or most used raw picture editor on Android is Photoshop Express. I'm going to go ahead and open the raw file. And this is Photoshop Express. You, it has a bunch of presets down here you can select. Or, what I usually do is I go here to the settings, or the corrections, and I do a few things here. Do auto temp. I don't always do this, but this is usually how I do it. Auto exposure. Also adjust the contrast. The highlights, yeah. I love using defog. Not really sure what it does. You can also reduce red eye, I guess, if you want. Create borders, which I pretty much never do. I usually just come in here and I correct the photo a bit, and then I will save it. It does offer up here uh, auto enhance. And sometimes after I correct it, I'll go to the presets and I'll apply a preset on top of the corrections. I'm not going to say this. Clicked on another one. Here we go and you see it looks kind of almost bluish. So we'll go to temperature, auto, there we go, that looks better. Let's see exposure. Sometimes exposure can make it look a little bit too bright, but then when you go to defog and you crank up the defog, it usually compensates for it. You can double tap on it, zoom in. Clarity works the best I've found on things like uh, the sky, shots of the sky. Not really shots of people or things. It really seems to bring out the sky. Another thing that's fun sometimes is vibrance. Bring up the vibrance. And sometimes I'll bring down the saturation. Don't save. Let's try another one. Here's a picture of Crater Lake. to settings, exposure, auto, temperature, there we go, go to defog, and you can see the clouds definitely look more defined, and then clarity, Bring up the clarity. It brings out the sky a lot. Vibrance.
Okay, a uh, really good one, another really good one, if not maybe the best one as far as complicated, uh, is Adobe Lightroom. And uh, it definitely can open raw images. You have to then import them. Let's see. And I think it uploads it to your cloud. You just have to have a free account with Adobe. And it requires you to sign in. Okay. Let's see. You can definitely change a bunch of settings here. Auto tone. Sometimes it's nice, but sometimes it's not. Got clarity, that's nice. These are, oh, these are different filters. So it has a bunch of different filters you can select. I don't know. For some reason, I don't feel very impressed with this mobile version of Lightroom. Hmm. So, I had to include it. I had to include it because it is a product that also opens raw files. But yeah, I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like the f the feel of it, but maybe some people will be fine with it. Seems actually rather limited to me. But maybe in the hands of somebody more experienced, they would uh, prefer it. I don't know. Snapseed is a good photo editor that can edit raw photos. Yes. So, uh, although I must confess, I don't really use this one very much. I personally am more attuned to Photoshop Express and Handy Photo, but this is still a very powerful photo editor. Oh, that's nice. or after. There we go. Nice auto white balance.
So it develops it, and now we can edit it, I think. Yeah. So this has a lot of tools. This is a very good editor. Wow, maybe I need to start using this one. Oh, that looks pretty nice. It's more of an artistic look because it's so dramatic. But that for sure, that's really nice looking. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to have to start using this one. Probably shouldn't use too many of these filters on top of each other. They'll get too crazy looking. But this is Snapseed. This is by Google. And it is a great tool for editing. Uh, digital negatives, raw photos. I love how structure brings out the details in the clouds, even though this is a blurry picture. It's focused on my windshield, apparently. There's a nice one, for sure. I love that structure option. Kind of like with Instagram. See what HDR does. Yeah, that's definitely dramatic looking. If you like that real dramatic effect, you can make it strong. Or some people just do a subtle effect to where you can't really notice it. It just brings out some of the highlights or the shadows. <laughs> 